I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Merry Delta. Sasha Velour is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? I think you want to see me go off. Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Merry Delta, a luxury public access YouTube talk show and podcast where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Merry Delta. Very Merry Delta is for the woman who never met a cowl neck sweater she didn't love. Cowl neck sweaters, sexy, easy, sophisticated. Feel your very best. But first, Let's get into some things that are very Merry Delta. Go off Delta! You know what I love about Utah? Everything. <laughs> Hello? You know what I love about Utah? Being a consumer in Utah? Oh. I love spending money in Utah. It's one of my favorite things. I just came back from um, my annual Thanksgiving weekend trip to Utah. And not just Salt Lake, because I love Salt Lake. If you've ever gone to Salt Lake Pride, it's amazing. The people are amazing. The venues are amazing. Um, but it's not just Salt Lake that I like. It's driving out of Salt Lake. You know, we always pick up a rental car and then we go visit family. And I'm talking about over the river and through the woods, literally. It is absolutely stunning. I will say I think the sights for me are more beautiful in the winter. We do go in the summer as well. But I think in the winter it's beautiful because every time I look out, I'm like, oh my gosh, look. Because I'm, I'm the passenger. I'm not doing any of the driving. I look out and I'm like, that looks just like a Christmas tree. Like I went to a Ross that I always go to and it's in Vernal, Utah. And let me tell you something. When I go there, you can tell that that Ross caters their items to the demographic, right? So what whatever's in that area. And this is not far from uh, the, the Uinta Basin where there's like people that work in an oil field. So you're going to get a lot of things like Carhartt, um, uh, a lot of... Um, uh, uh, jackets and, and, and vests and puffers and these kind of things. But they have them in, you know, lots of big and tall sizes because these are like lumberjacks. These are like cow cowboy people, like a lot of that, right? Um, but I discovered something there that's kind of a thing. Like, I don't know if it's a new thing, but it's newish to me, is a shacket. Do you have a shacket? Because I now have, I had to get a new suitcase just to pack in all the shackets to get them home. Um... It's basically a jacket that looks like a shirt. So it's like a layering piece. And I, I found so many of them that I wanted from different brands in different colors. I love wearing Carhartt stuff or like Ben Davis, Dickies brand. You can get these. And it's a jacket looks like a button up shirt, right? But it'll have like a, a, a lining that is maybe insulated or it's wool or it's it's um, Sherpa, that kind of thing. So you can wear it over if you just want to knock off the chill, but you don't need like the full, like you don't need the snowman, you know, you just need something. Cause the whole time we were there, it was like 22 degrees, which sounds a lot colder than it really is. Like it's bearable to me, um, unless there's wind, because then once the wind comes in, it's a whole other story. But the other thing that I like about Utah, specifically going through the smaller towns is that there is this pride in, um, there is this pride that there is this pride in all of the uh, amenities that you would have at a at a liquor store, a convenience store, or a truck stop. So you're getting like full coffee bars with those little the things that you peel off and you like. I had no idea that there was more than French vanilla. 
They had a wall of them everywhere. Chocolate cream, vanilla, half and half, uh, 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 sweeten this, peppermint Grinch. I mean, they had all of them. And then the other thing that blows my mind is you are going to get in these places a Coke machine, a Pepsi machine, an iced coffee machine, a, I don't know, icy kind of thing. But then there's going to be two containers. And this is at 7-Eleven. This is at uh, like an AMPM type place, but I don't think they have AMPM there, maybe Rocket or something. But my new favorite, and it's been my new favorite probably for 10 years, is Maverick. You have to go to Maverick whenever you're there. The bathrooms are going to be clean. Uh, all these coffee options are going to be there. Diet Coke, uh, 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 Pepsi products. But then you're also going to have fully fresh brewed black iced tea and fully fresh brewed sweet tea sitting there like they they ref, they replenish this these people are not like like they understand if you've got time to lean you've got time to clean they are taking a broom to this they have so much pride in these stores it's like when you go in you're not questioning like whether or not like i up the street from here when i leave here you know i'm going to go get a hot dog but I always like I walk into the 7-Elevens in Southern California and I'm like, ooh, they need to clean that oven. You can smell it. It almost was like jet fuel. Right. So that's why I'm like, as much as I love to get certain items, I always think to myself, ooh, if it's coming out of the oven, I don't know. They don't clean those ovens, I don't think. But the roller thing, I'm like, ah, uh, whatever. I guess it's probably just as disgusting. Like this is how you take your job to your career is by taking pride in the things that you do. Maybe they're rewarded and paid better. I don't know. I am just saying that there's some sort of incentive that has to be happening because the people seem very, very happy that you're in the store. I don't, I rarely find somebody, uh, I rarely go in and find someone on their uh, their Bluetooth. Every time you go to a 7-Eleven in Southern California, people are on their Bluetooth and they're talking, oh, da, 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 da. And you think they're saying hello to you and you're like, I'm sorry, what was that? And they're like, oh, I'm on my ear, my, on my earpiece stupid hello you go there and they're like good morning hi how are you everything is so correct so i'm saying the iced tea is not just at maverick or just at seven Eleven. it's like all over they are so clean the thing is if you fly into salt lake i've told you before the airport is crazy it is super spread out i don't love it that much although they take some serious ass pride in decorating for the holidays because Every single, you know, those signs that'll say like Poughkeepsie flight 1045, Palm Springs 1030. Like the, there's like a zillion of those. Every one of them is covered in garland and lights and bulbs. They literally have like 15 foot toy soldiers. Outside of every bathroom, there's a fully decorated Christmas tree. I probably told you this before. I just get so excited because it's so beautiful. Uh, and it I, maybe I think this is like a thing they do. So you stop thinking about how far you fucking have to walk through the airport. I mean, and maybe that's the thing. So it's like a free Disneyland in a way um, without naked people running around. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I do love that. So if you fly into Salt Lake, you will enjoy the amenity. The bathroom's very nice. Those st You ever go into a bathroom stall and like you have to take care of business? I know it's not ideal to have to take a shit in public, but sometimes it has to happen. And you know, I would personally rather do it in a stall than like in a buffet, but you know, I, I don't always have the option. Um, in Salt Lake, you have a private little, you close it and there's no like little cracks where somebody will walk up and go like, and they'll see you in there. And you're like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Like, or you can see people's feet as you walk in, or if maybe somebody's like over six, three, you can see the top of their head and you're like, oh, this is awkward. None of that at Salt Lake airport, beautiful, clean bathrooms, doors, uh, top to bottom. The other thing that they have, especially at Maverick, is prepared food. So they have a counter. Well, it depends on which one you go to because some are a little smaller than others. But the newer one in Vernal has, and it's on the edge of the city. So you go down the prairie and then you're right there at the edge of the city. Um, so whether you're coming in or leaving town, you can stop at this one. Clean bathrooms, a little sitting area. Because if you go to the prepared food area, not only do they have a thing that has like, we just made these burritos here. Like, you know, when you go to some places and they'll just have stuff that they heat it up and it's fine. It's edible. There's nothing wrong with it. But these, they, they have like a dude or somebody making them and they roll them up and they wrap them and they put the time and the date so you know that they're going to be right. But then you can also go up to the counter 
and they've got stuff up there that they can prepare for you. And I ordered a sweet pork burrito. I didn't order it from them to make it. It was just in the thing. I saw the guy putting them out. So I was like, oh, that should be fresh. Baby, it was barbecued pork. Okay. With white rice and black beans, whole black beans. And then there was a bit of a sauce in it. But I'm telling you right now, if you season the meat, right? You don't need all these sauces. You don't need all these flavored rices. You don't need the rice and the beans are just texture. There's just like support. It's like a pillow for the sweet pork. It was absolutely delicious. It was so good. It was so good that I bought a second one, even though I knew that I, was, I wasn't going to eat it right then and there. And I knew that we were going to be having family dinner. But I thought, when I go back to the hotel, I can put this in the refrigerator. And what happens if maybe, I don't know, I decide I'm going to stay in the hotel for a while and I want something to eat? I had a second burrito there. And they were decent. I'm telling you, it's like this. It was like that. It was like that long and like, like I don't, I don't want to do a, you know what I mean? Anyway, it was perfect. It was like, it was like. She was like the size of like a Diet Coke can, like chubby and tall and like not too tall. It was sickening. It was so good. A sweet pork burrito. What was the other thing, Mark? Uh, refills. refills. And there's this honor system that happens because, you know, they know that you're going to come in, you're going to get a drink. And I love a place that's going to have like something smallish. So maybe like a 16 ounce for somebody who's a normal human being and drinks a normal amount of liquid. And then it goes 24. Then it goes 32. Then it goes 44. Hold on, babe. There's a 64. There's a 64. I need both hands to drink like that. Of course, I like to fill it up like super high with ice. So you're probably getting like more like a 24 ounces in it. But that's fine. It doesn't matter. I just like the optics of that. You know what I mean? Of course, I love a cruiser cup. But when you walk in and you go get your soda or your iced tea or or chata from the thing, and you put your lid on and you put your straw and you walk up, they, on an honor system, ask you, is this a refill or is this a new one? And I could easily just say like, oh, um, it's a refill. And they'd be like, okay. And then, the, you know, the refill's like, I don't know, 60 cents cheaper based on the size or whatever. Um, you could just lie to them. But the fact that they trust me so much gives me and you and everyone out there the reason to tell the truth because they're willing to believe you either way. Why wouldn't you want to tell the truth? Sometimes I want to lie, but I mean, you know. And if you're a pig and you're only in Salt Lake and you're going to be there for a limited amount of time, be sure that you get somewhere that sells um, Salt Lake t-shirts or Salt Lake sweatshirts or whatever, because inevitably you're going to find the ones that say, Salt Lake, Utah, and they abbreviate, and it's S L comma U T slut just for you. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I think you sluts want to see me take a break. She shoplifted a pair of dance tights from Walmart. Welcome, Sasha Valour. Oh my goodness. One of my greatest achievements. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You are just completely done. I mean, everyone, ex it's a weird expectation to have for you to always be so perfect, but you are always perfect. Well, I am an outfit repeater, so it was right once. That's good. It was, it's right the second time, but Absolutely. I wanted to, to match your beautiful set here. You look perfect. And I didn't realize it was going to be Christmas. It is Christmas. Uh, uh, and, and I feel bad because there are people that don't celebrate specifically Christmas. Sure. I think I just celebrate decorations. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I am a strip mall, Marshalls, um, uh, what is it? The Tuesday Club at Ross, which means anybody over 55, and even though I'm not over 55, I can convince them that I'm over 55. With the right 10% off. Why not? Um, you stole dance tights. Well, dance tights are expensive. They are. And I needed a pair huh? because I was just starting to try drag. Mm -hmm. And so I um, I went into Walmart, a place that I think... I think they're prepared for a little shoplifting, to so. be honest. I think they know it comes with the territory. I think so. And I did, I was really low on cash, but I had a dream and a, a wish in my heart. And so I stuffed those tights under my baggy t-shirt and I walked out with confidence. Yeah. And I, I don't really recommend stealing. 
but it was a good feeling. Well, you know, they were donating, I think, donating to the oh, arts. I love that. If I see some sweet queer baby stealing tights, I didn't see it either. You're like, you need those. You tights. need them. You do. Yeah, I do. You do. Absolutely. What's the last thing you stole? Uh, the last thing I stole, <laughs> I think, was in college. I know what, like, why college? Like, you should know better. But desperate I, times. <laughs> I had a friend that uh, dared me to steal a wallet. And the wallet was on the counter, like they were selling wallets to steal the wallets that they were selling. And the thing was, like, it wasn't even for the value of it. Yeah. It was to see if you had the nerve to do uh. it. But I was fucking in college. Like, I was 18 years old. I should have known better than that. And it was at a J.C. Penny that is still very near the <laughs> home, my home now. And I've gone into that J.C. Penny since then. And I remember at that time they were like, you'll never be allowed in this store again. How dare you? Like... And I remember still feeling like frightened because I'm like, oh my god, I have to go to Sephora inside J.C. Penney. Wait, so they caught you? They caught me, yo. <laughs> they took me down into the thing, the recesses, and my friend Christine, Christine Peffer, if you're watching this, she was just sitting there like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? Like, because you're over 18, right. they could just call your parents. No, they have you to figure might it out. Get in trouble. It was a, you know, don't sure. do that again. But still, it was so embarrassing because I do consider myself a, 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 a trustworthy person. But it was just a lapse in judgment. You should just be embarrassed you didn't get away with that. I, I would have thought you would have snatched it. I know. I know. You know, I have lots of places to hide things, but I don't, <laughs> I just can't get away fast enough. That's the problem. <laughs> They'll always stop me. Um, I, I have this question. I'm sure a lot of people do. Uh, who cleans the house of velour? Um, I am the cleaner of the mm -hmm. house. We just had a cleaning company come for the very first time okay. and it was I, I cleaned up ahead of time because I have to, to be respectful you have and like to. make sure also I was like the surfaces need to be clean so they can right. access all the things I have a lot of tchotchkes out in the uh -huh. house too many Violet my, or others? My <laughs> others uh -huh. um, yeah no Violet tchotchkes yet no. well uh, she's welcome anytime um, and yeah it was it was great I didn't know that I didn't know the house could get that clean uh -huh. Which makes me really embarrassed about my cleaning abilities. Do you like some people take pleasure in like certain like repetitious things like mopping, sweeping, folding laundry? Is there a thing that like is therapeutic for you at all or not really? Um, I I I love the smell of laundry. Oh, me too. I lo I don't like folding it, but I do love like taking it in uh -huh. and out of the machine. We have uh, laundry machines, which is very unusual in uh -huh. New York City. Um, so that was a big treat. And I'll yeah. do the towels, I, like the shower curtain, the bath mat, having that sure. just like fresh. I have oh. not had a cleaning crew come in, although I thought about it because I just think like, you know, the baseboards could be cleaner than that. Like you, I, I could be doing a little more than this. It was the tub transformation that truly really? blew my mind, like sparkling white. Uh huh. And they used magic erasers, which is like all purple. You know what those are, right? Like the Mr. Clean or yes, whatever? Yes, on everything. On everything. It didn't like I'm erase. I have makeup like, stains on like all the Oh, sinks. the shower always gets the like shower, that. Yeah. Especially like from makeup remover, I think because there's like like petroleum or whatever inside yeah. of it, then it gets on the ground and then any like orangey makeup or maybe like if you're walking around barefoot and your feet get like, you know, black underneath or whatever, yes. it presses in. Right. Right? Yeah. That so it's transformation like, sounds sickening. Oh, I yeah, it was that. good. Um, tell me if this is gross, but I like to take my makeup off sometimes in a bath. Is that weird? No, I don't think that's gross at all. I just get so all. tired after being yeah. in drag. I want to just kind of soak and yeah. slowly scrub at it. But then oh, the man. ring, it's like the Sasha Velour residue. Right. It's just there. Right. What color is that? Um, Like a, a the dark contour, usually. The back really? of my head color. Do you contour and highlight um, with like cream or do you do it with powder? Because I don't know how to do cream and I admire anybody that does. Oh, I, yeah, I cream I contour. I have no idea how to control that. At all. But you always look perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it's it. But it's just with the with a powder. Brush. It's all I know how to do. Wow. I don't know any. And somebody like came for me, and I was like, you know what? You you probably have every right to come for me because <laughs> they were talking about brows, and sometimes I use my own brows, and sometimes I'll block my brows. 
uh, depending upon how much room I have for a wig. Right. Right. Um, and this person was like, well, you just keep stamping on those brows. And I thought, you know, what? they are fucking right. I do keep stamping on the same shape of brow because <laughs> I just get stuck. You know what I mean? It's hard. I'll try to change something and do, I'll, I'll be like, OK, I'm going to do a completely different eye shape uh -huh. and it turns out exactly the same <laughs> it's just my hand it's all i can do yeah you know what works for you um not everybody knows but they should know that you got the name velour from um vegas in space right you've seen that movie. do you love i love that movie so much yeah and a shoplifter in vegas in space is the origin of my name babs velour uh-huh and um, I just, I love the name Babs Valor. Yeah. I probably should have just gone with that. You could have. But I kept my, my real first name, which is Sasha. That's yeah. I always was called. And people made fun of me for having a girl's name. So I was like, really? now it's working for me. You've been really high profile recently. And what I mean by that is like so visible. I feel like no matter an, an algorithm or whatever, people can click. But when you left Drag Race, you like immediately got on doing sort of this it was almost like, a, uh, I don't want to say not doing anything because that's not the case. You were doing nightgowns. You were doing so many things that yeah. nobody else was doing. But it was like you were just uh, marching to the beat of your own drum. Was this like something? Stubbornness. Yeah. Is it? I, I didn't know that. I wouldn't think that. But what what was that? I just knew exactly what I wanted to do with exactly the crown. And I, I wanted to keep doing the stuff I had been doing. That was drag to me. It was my show. And I, I dreamed of... It, it took like a couple years of working on my drag to get it, I think, at a level where I felt confident doing a solo show where right. like I didn't really feel like I had the materials or the skills for that. And now finally I'm like taking my own performances and touring the world with that. Yeah. The second time I, I did Smoke and Mirrors starting in 2019 and then, you know, hit the pandemic with that. So that right. delayed everything. Um, but yeah. It's just so exciting because, you know, I feel like all the winners have something different. And then, of course, I mean, everybody has something different. But it's nice to see when people bring something to the table that maybe somebody else didn't bring or didn't fully do. And you just have this sophistication in what you do. But there's also, um, you know, you are somebody who is self-effacing. You'll, you'll look at something and go, I want this to present well. I want my hard work to happen. Yeah. I want a lot of people to come along with me and showcase them. But you're also willing to um, also put forth, like, these are things I find funny about myself. These are silly right. things. Like, you don't, you can take what you do so seriously, but not yourself. I'm, I'm learning yeah. more and more how important it is to not take yourself too seriously. I think you've always been that way. That's what yeah. I've always gotten from you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, for sure. That was when I was filming Drag Race. That was the big message. It's like, mm -hmm. don't be too serious. But I found sometimes when you're not so serious, you can take moments that really matter. But now you are in the new season, uh, which we're gagging for, okay, the new good. season of We're Here. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. It, it was literally like a dream to be a part of that show because I love the style of performances that they do with the with the drag babies. They like right. they always put their part of their biography or some like kind of really emotional part of their story into a performance. And that's what I love to do myself. And then and then they're they're into the gags too. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's my thing. Was there anything general that was like scary about filming this, traveling with this? I was well, okay. I was I was really worried that I I wasn't funny enough. Oh, okay. To be on We're Here, because like you know Bob Shangel and Eureka are such mm -hmm. comedy queens at heart. So I I was worried that like same thing we were saying. Like, is am I going to be too serious for the show? But I feel like when I actually got to meet the drag daughters, it meant so much to them that I was just being a real person, right? And that we really had that connection, mm -hmm. and having someone who really listened to them m meant they could open up and felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think I was a good drag mom. I was surprised. I did not think I could be anyone's drag mom. Really? But maybe I'm going to start adopting now. <laughs> Do you not have drag children? I don't. No. I always said you're my drag sister because I don't know what yeah. the hell I'm doing. It's hard. I mean, I even say that like with, with other people that like I identify like a lot of uh, people as a drag mentor. But right. I'm like, that person, I don't want to like say that person was my drag mother because they were sort of my drag mother of this. Right. aspect and this person was my drag mother of that aspect you know some like, word says that coco peru is your drag mother. Dra very much so yeah. yeah like coco identifies as someone who just um has a lot of babies okay but they <laughs> uh 
but um, but it's still so thin. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she, someone like Coco or someone like Raja, even who's like my sister, but in right. many ways was my mother along with yes. me because she was doing drag probably a good eight years before I was, but we are very similar in age. She's only like two years older than I am. It's just, she started before I did. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I revere her in that way, but I also revere her as my sister and also like my brother and my friend. So it's hard to like right. lay that down. I think, yeah. but I think anybody wants to be your drag daughter. I mean, everyone would want that. Oh, okay. Take it's it. So sickening. It. Um, what, was there any aspects you would say of the filming that were like, besides that, was there any like phys physical fear being in these small towns? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah? I mean, you have to remember like there's a certain safety in being with a crew. Sure. Because you're not really alone. It may look alone on camera. But then sometimes we would just get left. <laughs> like the crew would pack up their cameras and go. And I'm just like there driving myself. Um, in a place I've just heard about someone like being attacked or something. Sure, sure. So that's fresh in my mind, and I'm walking back to the car. Um, but it was fine. Nothing, you nothing could. happened. I mean, we got slurs shouted at us. We got lots of nasty looks, lots of comments about mm -hmm. us being Satan worshippers and going to hell. But that's you know that's a Tuesday. Let's take a break. Do you like oranges on your salad? Tell us your story. Send a letter to readmedelta at gmail.com. Sasha, do you like oranges on your salad? I prefer a grapefruit. Really? Yeah, I like that tartness. You do? Orange doesn't do it for me. No? Yeah. Do you like fruit in general on a on a vegetable salad or is it like just certain garnishes? Just like a little, just like a little pinch of, I love citrus on a salad. You like do? Like lemon juice. Mm-hmm. Orange isn't tart enough it's not doing for me. It. How about you? Um, I I don't think I've ever put oranges on my salad, but I do love oranges in a fruit salad. Yes. Um, but I do, and this is probably a lot of people are going to be bothered by this because it's like such a a meme worthy thing. I like raisins on my salad, <gasps> and a lot of people think that's Ooh. gross because of the the sort of um. There's this philosophy that people are like, oh, it's so white to put raisins in potato salad. And I don't think it's just white. I think it's just gross because I don't want that in my potato salad. <laughs> but on a green salad, like if I'm making a salad bar salad, uh -huh. I totally have to have raisins. Oh, yeah. that They do always have raisins at the right? salad bar, but I've never lady. tried it. It's kind of old lady. I always go for the seeds. I like the oh, seeds. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Do you like carrot raisin salad? Is it just carrots and raisins? It's just carrots and raisins and probably like a... I've not had a carrot raisin salad. I'm not a big fan. No. I used to not like uh, cooked carrots, like, like say, baby carrots cooked. I used to not oh, like that. Oh, I don't that. like that. I'm not a big, the biggest. I'll eat it if it's like in a pot roast. Yes. But I feel like they, as soon as something starts to lose its color a little bit, like, it doesn't taste as good to me. See, I love you. I yeah, mean, and like you, the I peas, mean, when you cook that. a pea. And it gets Do you like, eat peas? I, I like a, I like like a pea in a salad. That's Sugar, not that. <laughs> when you were planning your lip sync for the finale of Drag Race, was there ever a version where you pulled up your wig and um, Starbucks almond croissants fell out? Would that happen? <laughs> it it could. Yeah. yeah. They'd have to first be in the glove because right. I think it's like the the storytelling it needs it. Yeah, you need – maybe I come out with one in a bag mm -hmm. and then it falls on the ground. I and then I'm heartbroken. And then I find more inside my wig. <laughs> so emotional. <laughs> I, always, I, was, I, was, I was thinking this about you last week when I knew that you would be here. What fragrance do you wear? Or what kind of fragrance oh, I, do you wear? I change it up. You do? I, I think it should go with the outfit. I love that. Yeah. What mm -hmm. fragrance do you wear? I change it up also. But um, usually my go-to, if I have to grab one bottle of something... It would be Youth Dew by Estee Lauder, which is... Oh, I don't know what that smells like. So it's extremely heavy. And sometimes when I wear it, people are like, are you wearing Old Spice? It originally started as a bath <laughs> oil hot. for women in the 50s by Estee Lauder. And then they decided they would make a fragrance out of it. But it's still the same bottle with a little gold bow. And they have oh, yes. a dusting powder. <gasps> During the holidays, I wonder if they have it now, they'll still sell a perfume solid. Do you like perfume solids? I do. I, I like them too. I do. I you love just like take anything a little dab. Like yeah, it, it feels rich. Uh, I put it on my pubes sometimes. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> well, nice. you have to. Yeah, well, exactly. you're not the only one. Sonique uh, mm -hmm. was Sonique telling us about um, 
Uh, no, Carmen was telling us. Carmen Carrera was here. Yeah. And she was saying that she has a fragrance for her her behind, <gasps> behind her knees, oh, and she that. mixes them. So you put that on your pubes. Yeah, it takes you on a on a journey. It does. Yeah, you follow follow it down like a dog. It does. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. What would be something that like? If you were going to pick something for this. Have you ever mixed your own fragrance? No, I would like to go to a place where you can do that. I did that. I'm wearing one that I, I you, mixed myself. And what, what did you like to put in it? I put Tonka and oh, yeah. ja a little um, rosemary mm. and then something called Barnwood. Ooh, which what's smells, that? It smells like dirt and like hay. Okay. And just a little bit of that. A little bit of something that doesn't smell great. Uh-huh. Gives you a, some something to think about. Okay. I love that in my sense. That makes a lot of sense because people filthy. always put, what's the leaf that people always put in like a soup? A bay leaf. Bay leaf. Oh, yeah. Right? It and, doesn't taste great. And that and that was the thing. I was <laughs> I looked up the other day, why are we putting bay leaf in all these Thanksgiving <laughs> recipes? And it said that the, and I'm not a chef, and so if you were a chef and you're watching this, I'm not trying to, you can correct me because I don't know. But the Google of it said it enhances the flavors of the other things. So like you're saying, it, it gives that yes. earthiness I probably underneath yeah. for everything to like dance. Yes. That is sickening. What would you put in yours? Oh, I something leather for sure. Ooh, yes. I, I have to have that in there. I love cinnamon. I love clove. I love um um mm, I love a Bulgarian rose because it's creamy. Ooh. So I love Bulgarian rose a lot. Rose is a hard scent. Yeah. Yeah. After Drag Race, I felt like I should be wearing rose right. scent, but I don't like the way it smells. Yeah, so if you get a Bulgarian, it's it's much more like a creamier and mysterious, whereas like the rose smells like the rose. Oh, yeah. But the Bulgarian rose, it's it's kind of like, if you can imagine something earthy uh, and vanilla-y, but then pinky, like pink pepper kind Ooh. of. Yeah, it's sickening. Oh, it's, and it's not rose. It's not rose. You're not getting right, rose. Like Give it a ball. shot. Okay, I'll try. Do you have any plans to make your book The Big Reveal into a film? Maybe starring Jean Smart? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, she can do anything. She can. Mm -hmm. She'd she be can. great. Um no, I don't think I don't think it would be a good film. You don't think so? No, it would be a terrible film. If you could <laughs> cast someone as you, anyone. Oh, what a fun question. I, know. I always I think about that. I don't have anybody. I can't think yeah, of Yeah, I can't I don't think I would cast myself, of course. Of course. I'll be too old to play myself soon. I'm in buy it for Hollywood. I don't think so. I don't think so. You're like That's one of these very young kids. smooth. Anyway, do you do like a, a, do you have like a specific skincare or do you just try out like different things? I try, I'll just try different things. Same I here. always feel like I'm I don't know what I'm doing. I never know what I'm doing. I it can never be fun. Know. It can be fun. Lotions and potions feel right. nice. I always feel like the sad part for me is that I will go buy something new when I'm like, oh, my face is feeling dry. And I think that's not the time. I right. should have done it before yeah, and used the bottle, right? <laughs> yes. What do they always say? Like if the doctor uh, prescribes medicine, they're like, take it till the bottle is done, right? And some people are like, I feel better. I don't need to take anymore. And then they get sick again. Yes. That's the same thing with the skin cream. Right, exactly. You're supposed to know these things. You're the, you are young and beautiful. Well, that this is you can't take skincare advice from young people. Because they don't true. have problematic skin. I guess that's so true. So anything works. They can just spray on that and, you know, yeah. oil here, exfoliate, and their face will survive it. I was asking you about, or, or talking about the bay leaf, and we're like in the season where everybody's like cooking, Friendsgiving, Christmas. Are you a, are you somebody who likes to cook? No, I don't like no. to cook at all. I like to arrange the food on a plate. Oh, you're oh, which you is do perfect for if I do if we get takeout and I'll arrange it. But uh -huh. my partner cooks Johnny same, is an amazing way. cook, and then I like to, I'll, I'll plate it up for. I us. love that, and I, I do the dishes. I oh, okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I like that. It's my family um, always used to be like whoever wasn't cooking would like help with the dishes or that kind of thing. But that's when I was younger, and now like the younger kids in the family are like. We're not doing that. And now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, well, I brought what I was supposed to bring. I'm not doing any fucking dishes. <laughs> so no one does the dishes. Right. I, I think I don't even know who ended up doing dishes this year. But um, what's your what what would you bring to that you cook? Well, just because I'm a huge fan of it, I love sweet potatoes or yams or a mix of both. And I'm totally on board with like a quote unquote healthier option or uh -huh. like a totally decadent option. Because I like the actual taste of them. So, you know, if it's just the traditional, like, marshmallow, I'm down for it. Yeah. 
Or if we're going to do something that's got cranberry in it and maybe something savory mixed with it, I'm down for that. And if it's just straight out of the can, I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like the canned pureed I'll eat it. sweet potatoes? I'll eat it. Will you eat it? You won't eat no, it. No, I won't eat that. Really? Will you, do you like sweet I potatoes? I just don't like sweet potatoes. You don't, that's fine. I Like do if it's baked, potatoes? I love mashed potatoes. Okay. Yes, that's the one thing I can cook. Okay, if we're Lots fixing your plate, if we're mm-hmm. fixing your plate, and all the options of all the things are there, what what are you going to put on your plate at, at, at a holiday dinner? I don't want to say Thanksgiving because not everybody would, wants to revere that, and I totally that's understand fair. why. We're not doing that. Um, but at a holiday, this time of year. Okay. All the sides. That's, And because I'm a pescatarian, Ooh, I don't eat the I, Tell me turkey. more. Tell me. I had to check my teeth. Tell me about pe- being a pescatarian before we go any further, because I love this. Well, I love fish. Uh huh. I and it, uh, but I don't. I don't even like the taste of meat. Mm-hmm. Like, um, even as a kid, chicken okay. I found disgusting. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why, but I think it's just it's not meant like for it. me. Yeah. Um, so I I eat mostly vegetarian, and then every now and then a little fish. I love that. I've always said if I wasn't fucking lazy. And unwilling to try, I would be the best <laughs> vegan because I taste vegan food. Like somebody will be like, oh, here's a vegan lunch. When I was working on Drag Race, um, Natasha, who is Rue's like personal yes. assistant, uh, she's vegan. And she would always order and she would be like, I'm going to order you something. And I swear to God, the best meals I ever had in my life were the ones that she ordered from the vegan restaurant. It can be amazingly flavorful. And I'm like, do you know how like your vegetables. life would probably change if you just, even if I didn't have to cook them, if I just ordered from the goddamn restaurant, I could fly. <laughs> I could. It's so it's so good. It's such a good principle anyway, regardless of the taste. The principles behind right. that are beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like it's not sustainable to be killing. Right. Right. Things every time we eat. Even though you murder fish all day. I do. But, you know, they small brains. <laughs> small brains. Let's take a break. And we are back with Sasha Velour. And this is the part of the um, Luxury Access uh, Luxury Access podcast, YouTube, talk show, audio format. These are all words I just throw out and then they'll figure it out later because I don't know. They'll fix it in the edit, right? Fix it in the edit. I always think that. It's where we open letters and we call it Read Me Delta. So people will send in letters. Read Me Delta! Also, if you want to send a letter, send it to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can send questions about Christmas tree decorations or repurposing or um, how to clean velour, which I don't really know how you clean. You have on velvet now. Yeah, you can. Uh, this is this is velour. Oh, it's you can, velour. You can throw that in the washer. You can. Oh yes. Yeah. That's Does it bleed it. much or? No. no. Um. Yes, the first time. Yeah, but you're not going to wash it with other stuff anyway. No, just no. With, just by itself. All right. So we have a first letter that's in here. It came in. Whee! Oh. Landed. A sleigh. A sleigh. Sleigh. Sleigh the world. Sleigh, sis. It's Christmas. All right. Let's see what this says. Again, you can send these letters. Sometimes I say send um, comments and uh, observations, but I don't want you to send comments because honestly, you'll send them and then they'll just be reads. You know what I mean? <laughs> we have mirrors. We really do. This is we the know best. what's wrong. And this is the best I can do. Honestly, today, like I, every day I look and I'm like, God, this could be very improved. I know it, but this is my capability. Like this is where I'm at. Um, Hi, Delta and fanciful friend. Who should be the next host of the U.S. edition of RuPaul's Drag Race? Top three best Pluto delight. Oh, that's a good question. Who should be the next next host if RuPaul decides that they don't want to oh. host anymore? Oh, you know? which you know, I don't, I don't know. Do you think that would ever happen? I don't know. I don't think I don't that know. will ever happen. I always think just from the bit, of the, the couple of seasons that um I got to work behind. Um, behind the the camera, um, that it does seem, I think, to people that like, oh, it must be easy. But I mean, Rue works really, really yeah. hard, and it is taxing. Even just a simple thing like, um, like the idea of eating throughout the day, right? Like, 
oh, we can't eat normally. Yeah, in drag. and RuPaul is like, I'm not going to do that. Like, she'll have coffee or whatever, right. but like, she just can't because she's got to get into outfits, just as you said, as a contestant. Yeah. Um, but who do you think would be willing to do that kind of stamina, have that stamina? Um, I think Bianca would, yeah. would do it and would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, who would you choose? I mean, I, what about you? I think you would be great. Oh, no. I think so. <laughs> I'm bad with the critiques. I just hope. Well, the I host, just, I mean, the host doesn't really have to critique. I guess you can just be positive and yeah, let the people Rue on the side of you say off, the mean things. Right? <laughs> that was a change, though, right? She used to be. I think so. Yeah, she, she's in. She I think it harsher. has to really get to her to then have to say something. Because yes. it has. We've seen right. it happen. All right. So we have another letter. This is a stocking that says, Happy Holidays, Russ. Russ, we have your stocking. <laughs> I don't know where Russ is, but we have a stocking. So, um, are you what? What Love kind the letter of letter opener? Thank you. I collect them. Oh. What? Um, when you leave here today, are you going to have lunch, or did you already have lunch? I had uh, some scrambled eggs. That's not it. Like a brunch, if you will. But yeah, That's I'm. I mean, I'm gonna eat something good. That's not enough. You need to have something else. It wasn't. It was. It didn't hit the spot. You're gonna be hungry. Yeah. You're probably not gonna go um, with me to Seven Eleven and get a hot dog, are you? No. You can't do a hot dog. I can't do a hot dog. But my... what if it was a fish hot dog? I would do that. I wonder if they have tuna hot dogs. I don't know. If that sounds good. Really? <laughs> I need. It should be like a lobster hot dog. Ooh, like a lobster roll. A lobster. Okay, yeah, that yeah, sounds lobster. good. Dear Delta, my question is for Sasha. So they knew at some point you were going to be here. Honestly, these these some of these letters bank, and people will like say, "Oh, I hope so and so is going to be on." So they oh this has been gosh. kicking around. <gasps> I have a double XL pink Minnie Mouse pajama top that I recently begun wearing during the day. I just stopped taking it off when I leave the house. My question for Sasha is this. Would you consider this a nightgown or am I just cynically depressed? <laughs> Sincerely, very undante. <laughs> it's a, that's a nightgown. That's a nightgown. That's a night, nightgowns aren't beautiful. They are oh. comfortable. Do you do you wear nightgowns? Um, I have a couple kind of stretched out tank tops. Okay. That are my sleeping uh-huh. garment of choice. Um, and despite my show being called Nightgowns, I I don't think I've really worn a nightgown mm-hmm. in drag. Would you wear a peignoir? Oh, yes. I love a peignoir. I see With you a little that feather. Yes. Detail, a little marabou on it. Yes. Normally we do th- two letters, but we have a surprise <gasps> one in this little box right here. People are crazy. Are they handwritten letters? Um, sometimes they are, and sometimes I, these particular letters have not been sent in uh, beautiful stationery, but sometimes they are. Sometimes I come here, and the um, the gal Friday who works at the desk um, will say, you have some handwritten letters that came in. And what does this one say? So, okay, well. Oh, it's a picture. Okay, oh. this is a good one. Dear Delta and guest, do you think this bear... Ooh. Is gay. <laughs> oh, definitely. It's the Charmin bear. Yes. I'm trying to patch it together properly. I think it goes like that. Is the Charmin bear gendered? Um, well, it's blue. So I think they're sending us a message. <laughs> and, and it has a flower. So I think the message is that's a gay man. I think that's bear. what they're trying to say. I would think so, but I mean I'm I say that that bear could be non-binary. Yeah. I think that bear could be so many different things. Yeah. We can't assume. Right. Because the bear hasn't shared. And we can't blame it for being blue we, because it was born that way. Mm-hmm. But we can blame it for liking blue. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're over-identifying with do just you, that one color. Do you have a certain type of toilet paper that you like to buy for your home? No, I haven't figured I haven't figured one out yet. No, no it's not Charmin. You're not like, I have to have Charmin. No. Is, no. There, is there a one that's better, do you think? Well, I feel like I you would have an opinion on I this. I do. I think um, if you get like the store brand of what's supposed to be like the Charmin Extra Soft, yeah. it's usually pretty good and that's at Target. Okay, that's so nice. So I usually go for that. And then I like to have um, um, moistened towelettes to use afterwards if you don't have access to a bidet. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, that's so fancy. Yeah, you have and to And do have flush them. them. I do. And we have a septic system, so I know okay. that will eventually be a problem. But for now, it's not really my problem. 
You know, for years I lived afraid. for years I lived in an apartment. So anytime there was any kind of plumbing issue, I would think like it could never be us because there's people with babies here and they're probably flushing diapers or probably whatever. Yeah. But now we recently moved into our own house. And so that is like, these are things that are now your responsibility. <laughs> I don't want that. In some countries, they like don't won't even let you flush toilet paper. Right. And some even some places in New York City, they say like our plumbing can't handle it. Like you need to take your poopy toilet paper and put it in this trash can. You can't be serious. Very serious. At like a nice restaurant in New York. Stop it. Yes. And do you just open the lid and it's like Yes. No fucking way. It's Sasha that's upsetting. Velour. And I, I, I don't know what to do because I, I don't want to do that. But I also don't want to be the cause of the plumbing break. Right. What if you just shit on the walls or you just like. Well, that's what I do. That's it. the only option. Like a like an animal. Exactly. Like, this is what you get. <laughs> Wipe my ass on your wallpaper. Do you have pets? I have one dog. Little. Oh, tell me. His name is Vanya. He's an Italian greyhound, which is the little mini greyhounds. He's so sweet. Very quiet. I already know it. I already yeah. know. And he just like, he sits and he folds his little wrists very limply. And he crosses them and just looks at us. And oh, I bet so he has sweet. the best home with you. With the two of you, he has I a bet. Good life. You know, um, because I, I I love an Italian Greyhound. And I, I say this because I used to watch the dog shows. I love watching those. <gasps> love, and they that's would bring my Thanksgiving out, tradition. Is it? Okay. Yes. And they bring out a Whippet. Have you ever seen a Whippet? I love a Whippet. And so it reminds me of that streamlined yes. little baby body. They're so oh, sweet. They're so sweet. Very loving. Yeah. I always thought kind of standoffish and uh -huh. weird, but no, they're so, so oh, affectionate. Oh, just proper and yeah. and well. And I, that sounds like a, that, your dog sounds like the perfect fit for your family. I mean, honestly, you know, you look at people and you're like, what would that person look like if they were this kind of animal, a bird or whatever? Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Do you have a pet? I have cats. I have two cats. We're, we're probably going to get a dog. We need to. I have two cats, Tango and Cha-Cha. My partner is a former ballroom oh. dancer. So, oh, yeah. So we had to have those <laughs> See, names. you need a samba. And a yeah. So they're sweet. <laughs> they're sweet. I love it. Thank you for being here. Thank you this for having so, me. This is so, so fun. You are just as lovely as anybody. You know, this is really my first. I mean, of course, I've seen you in person, but never uh, sat down to chit-chat. I know. I could do this all day, all You're week. Fun. Thank you, you so are much. super, super fun. Thank you for listening and watching Very Delta. We come out every single Monday. Subscribe to Mom Podcast right here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode. And search for Very Delta on your favorite podcast apps and... Subscribe to Mom Plus for even more Very Delta. You can send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com and you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. Um, where can people follow you on social media? Follow me on Instagram at Sasha Valour and check out my website, sashavalour.com, where you can find my tour dates, including my big reveal live show tour, which is coming to Europe in 2024. And where does that kick off? Kicks off in London. Sickening. Yes. It's going to be sickening. I'm really excited. We're, excited We're going for to that. the Palladium and the Folie Berger. This is going to be Stop fantasy. it. Yes. Josephine Baker's mirror. Yeah. Yeah. She literally saw herself naked. This is where I'm going to look at myself. Are your earrings sweating. On your, are your earrings on your ears or are they on Yeah, they're on my ears. I thought maybe they were on your headpiece. You know, that probably would be more comfortable. I saw a fashion show where they did that in the 90s. They just attached it to the, to the actual That's wigs. So Yes. I mean, if you're moving Ooh. fast enough, who's going to... Right. Yeah. But I mean, we're not That'd really be wild. If Then I do a wig reveal and it just the earrings fly off with it. Do you have like... Would you just like... Are you going to... Do you have like a, a Pussycat Dolls number that you're going to do on the tour or not? That's probably not your speed. No, I should. <laughs> That'd be cute. You could kill it. That'd be surprising. You know what's interesting is when people think of certain people, they're like, oh no, that person wouldn't do that. And it's like, maybe I wouldn't do that, but it doesn't mean that they can't do that. I, I'm so contrary. Now, I, if someone says that to me, then I want to try it. Sure. No, totally. <laughs> totally. I think that's the mark. It's like being able to wrap yourself around it and be like, I can show you how I can do it. We know how to put our own. Yeah. You put your own it. spin on it. You can also follow the show on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta, because if you're not, you're really only getting half the Delta. Join me next week right here. And until then, make sure you keep things very merry Delta. <laughs> This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. Theme from Delta Works, Very Delta by the Woolpits Orchestra. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. 
Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 